and welcome back to Community Couch Time, a daily talk show where we talk about things that are important, things that are happening in our community, in our state, in this country, and internationally. Oftentimes, the topics that we discuss are ones that others aren't talking about, and the question is, why aren't we? Good morning, and welcome back to Community Couch Time. Today is a great day. How are you, Miss Wallace? I'm doing fabulous, wonderful, excellent, celebrating another day in great Black history. Glad to be hanging out with you, Miss Cardona, celebrating as well. And of <laughs> course, our very special guest, Mr. Smith. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is great. Uh, this talking Black history, we can do it every we do it every day. So why not do it, you right. know, today? <laughs> every day of the year is a Black History Day. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we have a couple of questions for you. And, um, you know, you are really like inspirational to our community um, as a musician, as an educator, as a father, right? An amazing father. I love seeing you with your son. It's adorable. Um, and the way that you uplift him so much, it's really nice. And so, um, but the specific question that I have for you today is around your expertise with, with music. And so the question I have is, um, can you tell us a little bit about like the beautiful black impact um, on music in just American, like, you know, music history in general? Sure. Uh, and the simple way to explain that really is that American music is black music. Simple. <laughs> you, mean, right. you can start with any genre is more from a black perspective. Mm -hmm. So you can start with obviously when in 16, 16, um, 19 with the slaves coming in and for them to have a way to communicate. Mm -hmm. A lot of that was through song and they had instruments at the, at the time. Then as soon as the slave masters got hit to that, mm -hmm. took the instruments away, then black people would use their bodies for rhythm and their voices to, uh, to gather and, and to gather and to communicate whatever they had left of their culture. It, with music, black people during the slave times used music to communicate and it goes all the way up to where black people now, where you're in a room with black people, you do the nod. And it's kind of like this, this, whatever, just to kind of communicate, to kind of, to kind of acknowledge the community. So what, what really got started with uh, black music and I would say American music was really in the late 1800s at Congo Square. And this is in New Orleans. There's, they have a plaque there still. It's a really beautiful place to go to visit. And um, the slaves on Sundays would go and congregate and they would, they would dance, they would play whatever instruments they had, they would sing like every Sunday. And then they would bring in all the influences because remember New Orleans is a port city. So people would and it, and it went through a lot of um, different um, colonization with the Spanish, with the French, um, then, then obviously becoming a part of the United States where all of those influences just kind of gelled. And then jazz came from that. A lot of the birthplace of jazz. One of the uh, key figures that's recognized is Buddy Bolden with, with um, playing jazz. And then it's funny because it does like this natural progression up the Mississippi, right? So then in, you, when you go up the Mississippi to the state of Mississippi, you have a lot of blues getting going there, right? So a lot of blues artists started from there. You're talking about, and this is like early 1900s, like the, probably the most famous blues musician um, from that era is, is uh, Robert Johnson. Yeah. And whatever the legend about him meeting the devil, whatever. But, you know, to, to explain how he um, developed basically laying down the basis of blues. I, whatever you want to believe, he was there, he was doing it. And then going up the Mississippi again to ending up in Chicago. And this was one of the great migrations too. So the migrations of African-Americans followed, the music followed. So then when they got up to Chicago and then you had uh, artists like Louis, Ar Louis Armstrong um, that were doing their Hot Five and Hot Seven in, in recording in Chicago. Uh, and then, then the rate, and then... You also to talk about radio where the radio would blast off this music everywhere and it start, then it started going all over the country. And that right there, I mean, that's just a basis. And again, this is a deep subject and I'm not even, I, I'm sure I'm not mentioning everybody I need to mention, uh, but that lineage goes up from blues 
to jazz moving out to, to and jazz spreading out to like Kansas City where you get Charlie Parker to um, the big bands with Duke Ellington, Count Basie. Um, and then it would go to New York where you had, you had uh, the bebop era where you had Thelonious Monk, Miles Davis. Charlie Parker came from um, Kansas City to New York. And then from New York, you're going to the 50s and the 60s, 50s, where you had artists like Chuck Berry. And, um, and, I'm, and the thing is, and I know I'm trying to be quick, and I know I'm forgetting names. I know that there are, uh, there are a lot of um, women that were involved in this, too, that I'm totally forgetting. And I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I want to acknowledge uh, the contribution of all of, all of the African-Americans in that um, uh, in American music there. But you had the rock and roll stuff. Uh, that was going on in the 50s. And then you had the 60s where everything kind of exploded. And you can even go with, as the rock and roll in the 50s started um, to blossom, then you had the that undercurrent of soul music where you have like Ray Charles, you have Etta James. Mm -hmm. And then it leads to, uh, or Sam Cooke, who was an African-American uh, crooner who also was a business person forming his own record label, um, also, Ray Charles formed his own record label, own, talking about the business side with the uh, publishing and all that stuff. They were involved in that. Yeah. All the way leading up to Motown, who Motown, I think if I looked at, the, if we looked at the charts, I think Motown might have had more success than the Beatles, but basically in the 60s, it was Motown mm -hmm. and the Beatles, period. Wow. That's kind of what it is. And then the Beatles even covered a lot of Motown songs early on, like Smokey Robinson. Um, and uh, Martha and the Vandellas and stuff like that. So black music, and I'm and that's getting into the '60s, and then you get into like um, uh, funk music, James Brown, it, mixing all that stuff together. Funk music, um, and then talking over records, which is the baseline for hip hop. And hip hop from the early '70s of New York, because a lot of it because of uh, the Jamaican influence of the um, of these. Uh, um, of those uh, parties where they would bring their sound systems, meaning their, their records and um, um, the records in a big stereo system. A big per proponent of that was Ku Herc, who actually was born in Jamaica, moved up to the Bronx in the mid seventies and started uh, bringing those big sound systems and then people rapping over and shouting out over, wow. uh, over to those Bronx parties. And that moved all the way through New York and all the way through the, through the country where you had where you have pockets of hip hop in the South, you have pockets of hip hop in um in LA, obviously. And I mean, I just again, mo I'm, the, I'm assuming most people who are watching this can find these artists that they know and and, and find that lineage. Uh, so it it, it goes it goes everywhere. Again, it's super deep. Basically, you go from all the way from the slave times all the way up to hip hop, all the way up to whoever you're listening to today. Yeah. Uh, the Black music has been the undercurrent of American music, and I would say of American culture. So again, it's it's a deep. It is a deep ocean. Dive in wherever, and you will find, and you will swim to where you need to get to. <laughs> using black right. music, definitely in American culture, and then we can have a whole conversation about international, right? Because it goes way oh, beyond. I, I know I in, in Mexico. <laughs> at Mexico, African music. You know, Senegal music from Senegal yeah. from West Africa. I did. I mean, again, it is. It's vast, but just right. start with, I don't know, go listen to Chuck Berry. Yeah. <laughs> go listen to uh, Ma Rainey. Go listen to just any, um, if you see, a, go listen to any record or any or any stream or, with a black person on it and just listen yeah. to it. And then, that's, and then you can see where the lineage comes from. I, I really appreciate like what you're saying with that because I think as someone who also likes hip hop, it's, when you look at the samples, I think that that shows a lot of lineage and a lot of a history and past mm -hmm. because it's all, it makes me feel like, you know, some people will think, okay, well, you're not listening to your mom. You're not listening to people. But to me, hip hop shows that folks were listening to their uncles and their aunts <laughs> and their families yeah. records <laughs> because they're using those samples. Yeah. And Jay Dilla is someone who used a lot of Ahmad Jamal, for example, incredible jazz so if you ever like a sample you like the beat you like the instrumental figure out who they sample who who made this track mm -hmm. by the way mm -hmm. a great resource for that is a website called who sampled who sampled.com that will okay. show you that lineage that will actually do direct lineage for most hip-hop songs in the samples they were you that they've uh 
you know, they use to construct the song. Also, with songs that might use the sample, might use that song you're listening to. Who sample? That's exactly right, Miss Wallace. Okay. So. I mean, we'll, we'll make sure that the students have access to that that website mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, there's a uh, Talib Kweli in, in the song uh, called Knowledge of Self, K-O-S and Black Star said mm -hmm. voices and drums, original instruments. Right. And mm -hmm. I always took that to heart um, mm -hmm. because as you were saying, you know, you can beat on your body, you can sing a song and use your voice and the percussion that comes from beatboxing or scratching it's really a long lineage since the beginning of time yeah. that people have used that. And it's so interwoven in African ancestry. And I, I wanted to ask you a question about film as well. Um, so like I'm wearing Prince, Prince t -shirt, <laughs> the movie Purple Rain, oh, loved Purple. iconic. Um, <laughs> as a guitarist, he was phenomenal. He made his, he made full albums himself doing the drumming, doing the bass, doing the guitar incredible artist okay and a person who um people would maybe use the term like kind of gender fluid played with the concept of gender as well um in terms of his look and his hair and his style um but is integral to um black history black music black culture and and a rock influence to that and to r b what a rich conversation about our ancestors impact on American music. And so for today's Community Couch Time Daily Journal question, what is the music of your ancestors that inspires you, that you find to be timeless and just beautiful songs that you'd like the next generation to also love and enjoy? Thank you and in la